Thank you for tuning in to the NAFI YouTube channel. A special thank you to our NAFI members whose continued support and generosity make this content possible. In this video for December 2024, we'll cover a final rule impacting certificate holders with foreign addresses, a revised advisory circular regarding electronic records and signatures, and finally, a new final rule that creates a special federal aviation regulation, also known as an SFAR, laying the regulatory framework necessitated by the advancements in air mobility technologies. On to the main content. Up first is a new final rule impacting pilots and other airmen with foreign addresses. This rule impacts FAR Part 3, General Requirements, and comes into effect in two phases. January 6, 2025, and July 7, 2025. This rule will require individuals who hold certificates issued under Parts 47, 61, 63, 65, 67, or 107, who do not have a U.S. physical address of record on file with the FAA, to designate a U.S. agent for service. Let's dig into the details. The basis for this final rule is that as of the end of July 2022, the FAA estimated that 115,000 individuals applied for or held certificates, ratings, and authorizations under the parts previously mentioned had a foreign address with no U.S. physical address on file. The FAA also estimates that 97% of those individuals are citizens of foreign countries. Servicing the over 8,000 documents sent abroad by the FAA annually costs the agency close to $600,000 in staff, mailing, and translation costs. There are also a myriad of international service requirements that can significantly delay the delivery of legal notices. These documents include letters related to medical certification, enforcement, and other legal communication, letters of investigation, flight standards re-examination letters, and certain letters from the aircraft registry. So what is a U.S. agent for service? There are a few options here. This can be a commercial registered agent service company with a U.S. address, or an individual certificate holder can hire or designate any adult who is age 18 or older with a U.S. address, including a relative, friend, or associate. It is then the organization or person's role to forward any communications received from the FAA to the certificate holder. Whoever is designated by the certificate holder must be trustworthy as the FAA will view any documents delivered to the agent the same as if the documents were being delivered directly to the certificate holder. In the event of legal notices, time could be critical. Designating a U.S. agent for service is done via a new online service from the FAA called the U.S. Agent for Service System, or USAS. Here's the URL on the screen. At the time of this recording, this service is not yet live, but it states it should be available by the end of January. What does this mean for flight instructors? Starting on January 6, 2025, Anybody applying for a certificate or rating that has a foreign address as their residential address will need to include a U.S. physical address as the mailing address on all IACRA or Paper 8710 applications. If you, as a flight instructor, or perhaps any of your customers, have a foreign address as the residential address on file with the FAA and are not planning to file any new applications in the next few months, by July 7th, 2025, you must have filed a U.S. agent of service utilizing the new USAS system. If you're like me, and this is the first time you've encountered part three of the regulations, it's an interesting read. If you're looking for the fast track plain English approach, the FAA has published a nine page advisory circular 3-1 with guidance on this topic. Links are in the video description. On December 11, 2024, the FAA published an updated version of Advisory Circular 120-78. It will now be 120-78 Bravo, Electronic Signatures, Electronic Record Keeping, and Electronic Manuals. 
While most of this information is targeted at certificated air carriers, it also applies to a variety of airmen training, evaluation, and certification regulations. Chapter 1, General Information, has been reformatted and contains the most pertinent information for flight instructors. Most notably, it lists training providers and persons performing airman certification under Part 61, 141, and 142, among other types of airman certificates. Part 141 and 142 certificate holders will have their record keeping approved by the FAA. For Part 61, there is no requirement for formal approval, acceptance, or authorization. The FAA goes on to recommend that all certificate holders follow the guidelines in the advisory circular. If there is an FAA investigation and they find that the records are missing the key elements defined in the advisory circular or don't follow the guidelines, the FAA may question the validity of those records. The advisory circular also recommends having a backup to any electronic records using either a secondary electronic option or paper records. If you're using commercial electronic logbook provider or other electronic records provider, it's worth checking that the product has the key elements outlined in this advisory circular. You'll find a link in the video description. To wrap up, let's take a look at a final rule published on November 21st, 2024, entitled Integration of Powered Lift, Pilot Certification and Operations, Miscellaneous Amendments Related to Rotorcraft and Airplanes. This rule is huge at 227 pages. This rule creates a framework for the integration of advanced air mobility into the national airspace system. Since these aircraft and their operations are in the powered lift category, the FAA recognized that the training and certification framework necessary to train the initial group of pilots and instructors needed to be created. There are limited permanent changes to the regulations at this time, and a new time-limited 10-year SFAR is established to allow the FAA to gather data to better understand the needs of a permanent regulatory framework. In this video, I'll provide a high-level overview. Because AAM aircraft can have vastly different configurations, flight controls, and operating characteristics, the FAA has decided not to create classes within the powered lift category for these aircraft. Instead, pilots in command will need to hold a type rating. Once AAM aircraft achieve type certification, there will not be enough flight instructors qualified to provide the training to the estimated number of pilots needed for these new operations. To address this, the FAA will allow certain pilots employed by the aircraft manufacturer to obtain the necessary training and ratings. Once these personnel are fully qualified, they will form the initial group of instructors conducting certification training at Part 141 pilot schools, Part 142 training centers, and Part 135 operators. Training may take place in the aircraft itself or through expanded use of level C or higher full flight simulators. The FAA also provided the option for a deviation authority for consideration of future advancements in technology. Stay tuned to the NAFI channels for more updates and information on this exciting new opportunities flight instructors will have in the not so distant future. There's a link to the final rule in the video description. Thank you for tuning into this update. If you aren't yet a NAFI member, please consider joining to support the continued production of these update videos. I hope you all are having a wonderful holiday season and have a happy new year. We'll see you in January.